Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, Cooking with Mount Carey Rob, I suppose we're going to call it. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, um, last week I was inspired by Weaves the Wheel to um, make the ancient Aes Sedai symbol using um, egg white and egg yolk. Um, if you're interested to see how that worked out, uh, check out my other video. Um, it was it, it was quite into, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm, I normally cook in the kitchen all day long. I mean, that's what I do 50 hours a week and uh, obviously current events have, have stopped me doing that. So I got a little inspired about cooking and I thought, what can I make? And uh, the obvious option sort of popped into my head straight away and that was uh, honey cakes. I mean, they're a big staple in Edmunds Fields. Um, it, bell time has just been and gone. Honey cakes would be something that everyone would be enjoying. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make honey cakes and I'm going to share it with you all today. So I've popped on my chef gear. I've got all my ingredients. We're ready to rock and roll. So let's make honey cakes. Um, <laughs> all right. So to make honey cakes, you're going to need uh, not many ingredients, which is really nice. Um, so first off, you're going to need 250 grams of honey. Any honey you want to use is absolutely fine. Um, you know, if you want to just uh, take a dark honey, a light honey, uh, even a flavoured honey, it's, this is totally your option there. You can go for whichever honey you like. Uh, you want about 225 grams of unsalted butter. Uh, you need 100 grams of dark sugar. I've gone for a slightly lighter sugar myself um, because that's what I already had in my pantry, so waste not one not. Uh, after that, you're going to need three eggs. You want to have those beaten up so they're ready to go. You can see there, and you're going to need 300 grams of self-raising flour. Uh, hopefully you have some of that or are able to buy some of that in the, uh, the current uh, situation. Uh, obviously you're going to need a pan to um, make the cakes in. I've got two little bread tins I'm going to use as opposed to a round pan because I'll make smaller cakes. Uh, you need some butter to grease those with, and you'll actually need a pan to start off with um, because you will be cooking it um, in a pan to start with. To melt everything together before we bake it in the oven. Okay, so what you want to do, let me get the, uh, the gas going here. First you want to gently melt the butter in the pan. There we go. And you just want to melt that down gently. Okay, uh, I've, I've cut it up so it's in smaller pieces but as you can see obviously I've had it in the fridge since then because I was doing some of the other prep uh, and it's all stuck together, but that's fine. Let it all melt down a bit. Once you've slowly got it melted down, what you want to do is you want to add in your honey and your sugar. Okay. And uh, once you've got that in there, you want to boil it one minute. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, get this melted down. I did contemplate cutting everything out and I think, oh, shall I just stage by stage by stage by stage and I'll let you know what, let's enjoy the process. So we're actually going to uh, get the butter completely melted down, add in the other items here, I'm going to turn it down because it's going to boil, I don't want to do that yet, I just want to melt the butter, that's the important thing at this stage. There you go, that sizzling has stopped. Uh, but yeah, I thought if we enjoy the process a little bit, um, once we've done this and we've boiled it for a minute, we'll, we'll need to let it cool for 20 minutes. Now I'm not going to make you stare at that, because frankly, I mean, that's like watching paint dry, but the chef version. And I don't think anybody wants that right now. I mean, we've all got a bit of extra time on our hands, but not that much time. So I won't make you watch that. But yeah, so we're almost there. The thing I love about this recipe, um, it's, it's just sugar, sugar, butter, um, you know, and bake it with flour and eggs. I mean, what's not to love? I mean, this is going to be probably really sweet by the time we finish um, but you know I, I specifically went for a recipe because this is supposed to be a treat um, I thought let's go for a recipe that isn't you know like watch your calorie count or anything like that this is not a staple you have 24 7 this is not something they have every week this is a special um, dish that they would make for Beltine or other celebratory occasions and I thought you know what it needs to be indulgent because of that so I deliberately looked up um, for recipes where you can have the sacks or milks now, so I'm going to add in my other items. Make my sugar up a little bit. Bring that up in there. Um, did it really went for items that they would have in Emmons Field? I'm not going to get anything processed. Um, obviously, they wouldn't have self-raising flour, but they would have flour, and be, you know, using baking 
uh, products to, to pierce that off. So let's just get that in, in there. The honey I'm using is fairly runny, it's not sticking too much, so uh, it's not been too difficult to, to get in there. I'm just going to mix that spoon a little bit there. It'll get, no, it's not gotten all off, it's not hot enough, obviously, so I'm just going to pick it up a little bit. There we go. Now let's put that in there to soak. Right, so we want to mix this all together. Got a handy cloth, because this is a metal pan and the handles get quite warm. So I just want to make sure that I have lumps of sugar going on or anything there. Right, now I'm going to turn the heat back up. I'm going to get this boiling for one minute. Please don't time me. I'm a chef. One minute is as long as I deem. Um, unless I'm doing something very specific. Um, you know, you don't uh, take guesses when you're weighing out your flour for baking, for example. But a chef minute and a regular minute. I'm sure anyone who works for a chef, has worked with a chef, is a chef, will tell you. Yeah, a chef minute and an actual minute. They're not always the same thing, um, but you want to go for approximately a minute. If you feel like timing yourself, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to tell you no. Um, this is not, you know, a, as vital a stage as, for example, how much flour you would add to a cake. Um, because that's, you know, baking is a science. You can't just uh, show gun and uh, sort of cowboy the, or just shake the bag into it. Uh, but this stage you could, you know, a few liberties. You want to get everything sort of melted together. Okay, you want all that sugar to be breaking down. You don't want uncooked sugar in your honey cake. Um, so that's really what you're after. Um, obviously, you don't want to boil it into this flopping out the pan. You can see here it's, I mean, that's, that's a, I mean, that just looks delicious. I mean, what is that? That's butter, honey, and sugar. I mean, come on. There's a heart attack in a frying pan there, um, which is just, yeah, pretty amazing. So, there we go. It's bubbling away nicely. I used a large pan. I wasn't 100% sure how much this would bubble up. And I thought if I use a smaller pan and it pours over, it's just going to ruin everything. It's probably going to be really awful to clear up. I don't want to be doing that. Uh, so, whilst I'm doing this, um, I'll talk about the next stage of the dish. So, obviously, we're going to let this cool for 20 minutes because when you put in your eggs, um, if you haven't let them extra cool a little bit, you're just going to end up scrambling your eggs before it goes in the cake, and, and that's going to be awful. While this is cooling, I will recommend that you uh, preheat your oven at this stage. Um, so you're looking for um, 160 degrees. Um, for those of who don't know that, that's gas mark four. Um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit for my American friends. Um, so you'll need to use a converter there to figure that out. Um, I don't know how American ovens are set up. So I will, uh, I will have to leave that one in the, in in your capable hands, I'm sure. Give it a stab, it's, I'm sure it's not going to be difficult to figure out. Okay, so I've had that going for a minute then. I'm just going to turn that off. I mean, look at that, that looks... Look at that, you can see. Let me hold this up so you can see. So, see there, it's... Ooh, that's very hot. Here's the big oven gloves instead. There we go. So, as you can see there, you see it's a very smooth consistency. I'm not getting any lumps appear. It's still bubbling away. I mean, this is honey and sugar. So be very, very careful with this. Um, it's like hot jam. It, it's When it burns, it is going to burn you um, very, very significantly, um, quite deeply. So be very, very careful with this mixture while it's hot. Obviously, be careful at all stages. We will be using hot oven. Um, and the, the, the pans that we're going to cook in, a round pan you might use, smaller pans. Um, they're all going to get very, very hot, and I don't want you to burn yourselves. But we've done this stage right now. I'm going to leave it for 20 minutes. I have a handy assistant here. I'm going to ask to help me. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. Yeah, she's got some uses. And uh, we will call it a moment, uh, call it pause there for the moment. And I will bring you back in when it is time to add the eggs and the flour. But in the meantime, get your oven going if you haven't already, okay, and uh, preheat so that we're ready to bake. Remember, you want gas mark 360 degrees centigrade. Uh, unfortunately, I'll have to put that in the front of it. And I'll see you back in 20 minutes. Ciao.
Alexa, stop. Okay, guys. So, that's 20 minutes. Uh, hopefully, you remember to get your ovens on. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have to wait a little longer. Um, but, yeah. So, let's have a look at our mixture and see where we are. So, it's it should have thickened up by now. Okay. So, you can see. I do have a little film of honey sitting on the top. Um, but, uh, it uh, all seems to mix straight back in, but importantly, it's not so hot that when I throw the eggs in, they're going to scramble. Because quite frankly, I don't think we want scrambled eggs in a cake. It doesn't sound great. So, next up, you want to take your eggs. And we want to just fold those in. What you want to do is you want to mix this together until it is smooth and runny. Okay, so you can see I've currently it's looking it's not really mixed in, it's a bit lumpy. Um, so we'll see how long this process takes. Starting to get there, so make sure I get around all the edges, mix in everything. seems to have mixed in. I have found I've got a slight crust of sugar where it boiled up um, and obviously sunk back down. But you do see it's also darkened up quite a bit as well which is surprising me. For those who haven't figured out this is the first time I'm making it. I did think about doing a test run and I thought you know what if I do a test run then it's just going to take all the fun and spontaneity out of it. So what I did was I just researched the recipes, found the one I liked, and I thought, you know what, we'll do this for the first time together. So, if I seem very surprised by what happens, that's because this is the first time I've done it. Anyway. That seems to have settled down now. Smooth, quite runny. Got a couple of lumps. I just want to make sure I'm getting out. It seems to be the, the sugar more than the honey or anything else. But yeah, lovely. Now, next we want to be adding in the flour. Okay, um, but you want to be sifting it first. Sadly, I don't happen to own a sifter. I'm not really a baker, um, I don't bake that often. But um, I am on this occasion. In fact, um, I couldn't get flour in the shops no matter how much it's right. So I ended up buying it online. And uh, the only flour I could find that wasn't going to take two or three weeks to come to me was a very large bag. Um, probably weighs a bit more than some dogs, shall we say. It's 16 kilos. So you might see me baking more often. I might give bread a stab. Um, you know, if there's a bread recipe in Wheel of Time I can find, we will uh, we'll see what we can get to. Um, I might just bake for myself um, because it's just me here. So um, don't need to cook too much, really. But yeah, so my flour is going in unsifted, which may cause problems. You have to be very careful with it, but I do recommend you sift your flour to get rid of any lumps before you mix it in. Okay, but 300 grams self raising flour. Here we go. Lovely, lovely. And I'm just gonna, and we're just gonna try and shake it in a small amount to try and minimize the lumps. Which I'll just see what I might end up getting. You don't wanna dump it all in straight away anyway, even if you are sifting, because it's just gonna big pump of the flour go through the air. And it's gonna be awful to mix in. So you wanna mix it in in little bits and pieces. Try not to throw it all over the feet, which I just just done. This is starting to look a bit cake-like now, which is exciting. So can you see all that? We're starting to get a bit sort of a cake texture to it. Let's see, lots of flour still to mix in. 
I do apologise about the funky angle that uh, this is all being filmed on. My kitchen is not set up for uh, recording. Um, well, I, I couldn't bring my office downstairs. It didn't seem to work very well. <laughs> so, you are pinned in the corner where you can see the bench, the hot top, and uh, most of me, as it were. Um, I mean, it's mostly about the food, so, you know, if I'm slightly out of the picture, I don't feel that's a bad thing. But, uh, yeah, that's not flour going in there. Let me make sure I mix it all together. Let's get the last of that in. <laughs> now, yeah, you don't want to go, like, crazy with the mixing, because otherwise you are just going to not flour all over the place and for anyone who's never spilled flour before it's a hell of a mess and it's really really annoying to uh to clean up so this is another reason i'm using a slightly larger pan because then you can mix it all around quite effectively you see i've still got a lot of flour sitting there that needs to be mixed in just round the edges up the sides and flour just poofs everywhere So, I'm going to have to give this some extra mixing to make sure I don't have any lumps. So, I'm going to get to work on that, and then when I'm ready to put it into the pans, you'll see me again. Ah, welcome back. So, I think I've got it as good as I'm going to get it in terms of lumps, because I don't have the sifty flour. But, this is kind of what you're going for. It, to me, that's a very honey colour. That's very encouraging. And... I mean, it doesn't have a huge amount of smell, but I can smell the honey. Uh, if you were using a flavoured honey, um, or you know something with a, just a, a lot, uh, lot more, just a, a lot more into it. Yeah, I mean, perhaps you went overboard on the honey. I'm not going to judge you if you do that. But um, in terms of consistency and how it looks, I'm very confident. So I have here. I'm going to place it on top of here to make it moving around a lot easier. So, two little trays, you can see I've buttered them up, even though they are non-stick. Uh, if you want to use grease proof in there um, to avoid that issue, that is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. No. Place those on there because I want to be as close to you so you can see it going in. But, so I'm going to try and get about half the mix in each pan. Just look at the way that's folding in there. I mean, can you see that? That is just... That is so sexy. I definitely, for anyone who's British watching this, I definitely feel a bit like, you know, Blue Peter-ish is one I made earlier, or perhaps I, sh I should have been a bit Blue Peter-ish. Um, but, uh, yeah. I can definitely understand when you watch a cooking show and they're trying to do it for speed. Unless you're watching Jamie Oliver's meal in 20 minutes thing, which is definitely not the case here. Um, you might get the occasional swear word or a bit like, oh, just throw it in there, lad, you know what I mean? We are from the same place in England. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is uh, definitely step by step. And uh, I definitely feel for anyone who's had to, had to do a Blue Peter thing, because there's very much a... How do you entertain in the gaps, so to speak? So, but... Now we go, I can go over for the Let's just, uh, I have got clean fingers, I've washed my hands as I went, obviously. Let's just get that off there. Right. Okay, so, I mean, that looks lovely. And uh, I'm quite excited, I'm going to get two little sort of like cake loaves type thing, honey loaves, honey bread, honey cakes. Just very, very happy with all this. But anyway, I've got my free here. I remember Gas Mark 3, 160 degrees centigrade. So I'm not going to show you that on camera. I think you've all seen an oven. You pop that in on the top shelf. Now, here's another annoying bit. And I think this is why Beltine is so uh, anticipated. Because after you've done your 20 minutes of cooling, so you don't scramble your eggs in the mix, you're now going to put it in the oven for 50 minutes to an hour. That's a long time. 
So you've already spent easily half hour, if not 40 minutes, making this part of it, and now you've got to wait almost another hour again. Um, now, once again, I'm not going to make you wait on camera for that, and I am going to use my friend in the other room to remind me when to come and check the cakes. Um, although I'm going to get her to remind me after half an hour because I want to give you an update and a little sneak peek of how they're doing. But they're in there. Alexa, start a timer for 30 minutes, please. 30 minutes, starting now. Ah, she listens occasionally. Um, if you've got an Alexa unit, the games you can play that are quite entertaining. Um, and if you're a Star Trek fan and you have an Alexa unit, I recommend you go to your um, special features and change the alert name to computer and then watch an episode of Star Trek, because that is just entertaining as hell. Uh, particularly Next Generation, but all the others still work pretty well. Um, except the original, because they don't say computer in the same way. So, they're in there, they're ready to rock and roll. I will give you an update on how they look and how they're progressing after 30 minutes of cooking. And um, then after that, we'll be able to get them out of the oven when they're ready. And hopefully, I can tell you what they taste like. Um, but so far, I'm quietly confident. So, we'll see you in half an hour, guys. Cheers. Okay, so, Alexa has beat. 30 minutes has come round. So, let's have a look at the progress. So, as we can see there, the one on the left is looking a bit spongier and bubblier than the one on the right. But, I'm quite happy with how they're going so far. That gentle little... Oh, yeah, it's definitely firming up. So, I'm going to give that another half hour, I think. So, uh... Yeah, I just think with that left one being a bit, looking a bit squidgy on the top there, that a good half hour is going to be needed. But uh, in about 30 minutes, we'll report back and hopefully have some delicious honey cakes. See you then. Okay, so they've had an hour of the oven now, and uh, I've taken them out. They're a little dark on top, um, but do the skewer test. I don't have a skewer, but doing the skewer test, um, I pop it in. Like all good cakes, should be able to pull it out. It'll be nice and clean. So, they are fully cooked. I'm going to loosen them up, pop them out, and see what they look like. Uh, and I'll take you through the last stage. Exciting stuff. So, bring me in a little closer now. Um, I've popped them out of the tins. They actually just dropped straight out. So, clearly I must have um, buttered the, the tins well enough that uh, they didn't stick. Um, they, I think they look great. They look like sort of baked bars, um, you know, and they're, they feel spongy on the top. Uh, obviously, they're still very, very hot. Um, I'm going to give them just a little bit of time um, to cool slightly. But at this stage, what you want to be doing, you want to be taking your honey and you just want to cap them off with a little bit of honey. So I'm going to do that right now. Excuse me while I dash off camera. Um, I've, I've tilted down so you can actually see the, uh, the cakes themselves as opposed to me, because that's the bit we care about. Uh, so yeah, let's get the honey glaze, and then uh, I'll let them cool down completely. The honey will set slightly, and um, then I can slice it up and taste it. Looking really forward. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, to be honest. Just looks so delicious. Just putting a thin layer of honey on top as if it were just icing on top of the cake. I'm using the same knife that I used to, to do the skewer test. That's a uh, save on the dishes. Everybody loves less washing up or no washing up. So, look at that. And hopefully that's just going to absorb in Nice little layer of honey on the top. But yeah, fabulous. So, I'm going to come back in, I'm going to give those sort of 15, 20 minutes to cool down. And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to slice them up, and uh, we can do the taste test, which I'm really looking forward to. There. Okay, so, I've let them sit a little bit, they've got the honey on top, and from the look of it, they seem to have absorbed some of that honey in, which is really exciting for me because I just think it's going to add a really delicious touch. Um, they have gone a little firmer than when they initially came out, 
but that's kind of to be expected. So, now it's time to uh, cut them up and see what they taste like. So, I've got my nice uh, chopping board here, dinner is coming. It's, uh, if you're just having a honey cake for dinner, I think that might be a little irresponsible, maybe on your birthday. But, uh, for today it works. So, let's take just the one for the moment. I'm going to let the other one cool down. And let's get slicing. So, uh, it uh, is quite firm there. Have a look at that. And look at that. Really soft center. Um, and it does look a little dense. Overall, I mean, it's not, it's not as fat as I would have hoped for. Maybe it's because I did it in two smaller trays instead of one big one. But now it's time for the important taste test. Mmm. Mmm. Nice. So as I said, it's, it's a little dense. I mean, if I sifted the flour, obviously that might have uh, made a bit of a difference, but it's very soft. You get a lot of the dark sugar come through straight away, which you can taste. And I think if I used darker sugar, I would really have got that intensity straight away. And then you get the honey just sort of sail in and just sort of smooth around on your palate and oh that is that is pretty damn scrumptious I've got to say I'm very glad I made these and she'll definitely be making these when the TV show comes around this would be my treat make a small batch every week perhaps I think you could turn this into one giant cake you could very easily set one bar on top of the other make some kind of two-tiered cake you can make a big round cake out of it. I mean, if you had them nice and fluffy, put them in little cupcakes. Um, you know, you, you make tiny little honey honey cupcakes, cup, cup honey cakes. I don't know what, what word you would use there, what terminology. But this is a this is a great old treat. Definitely feeling a little bit of a sugary buzz. Um, and I, I hope I've done. Emmons feel proud. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any tweaks. Give it a go yourself. I will put the recipe. Sorry, I'm just going to keep eating because it's delicious. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. I had to keep eating there. It was just really, really enjoyed it. Um, I will put the recipe in the description for the video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching me attempt to make honey cakes today. Give it a go yourself. I'd love to see your videos, pictures, attempts, um, different ideas of how we put it together. Um, I will definitely try the recipe again. Um, I'll go buy myself a sieve. Can't believe I don't have a sieve. I just don't, don't use them on a normal day-to-day -day basis, and because I rarely bake, it's just not something that I'm going to have to uh, usually use. Um, but with a 16 kilo bag of flour that I've uh, picked up, I think that might change, so I will definitely pick one up on my next shop. Um, but yeah, I think cupcakes would be a really good way to do this. Um, just a great little treat. It's not in your face, sweet, sugar, honey. It's, it's very subtle, quite rich, but not in a, in a sickly way. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to eat the entire thing um, today. Heaven forbid. I normally would on things like this. I'm terrible for, <laughs> terrible for sweets. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, let me know how it goes. I say show, share your pictures with me. If you've enjoyed my videos, um, please like and subscribe. We'll be doing more of these. Um, I'm going to create a list of dishes from the Wheel of Time that I can cook. I've, I've just, I don't know, this is just a, it seems like a fun thing to try. Um, I'm sure there's lots of dishes mentioned that I can uh, take a stab at creating. Um, if you've got any suggestions, please throw them in there. I'm always happy to give them a go. Sometimes they might not be as authentic as possible because I might have to use different products, but, you know, we can certainly give it a go. Um, but yeah, let me see what you've done. I'd love to see your creations. Um, and that's, I think that's all from me today. Um, so thank you very much. 
I hope you have a lovely evening. Enjoy the sunshine wherever you are. Enjoy the honey cakes if you go and give them a taste. And uh, I will see you next time. So from me here, it's, uh, as always, the sign-off. Malkiri for the fandom, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.